and welcome back. This is Audrey Mack of Go Tell Ministry. We are going right along with our series on Holy Spirit. I hope you've enjoyed it so far. And I really want to, um, to encourage you to, to go and subscribe uh, to our YouTube page. You know, there is a little button that says subscribe because you will receive notifications when we've got new teaching coming out. Amen. You don't want to miss that. Holly, we've got a lot of good stuff coming. Hallelujah. But we also have all the social media and we also have a podcast, the Go Tell podcast with Audrey Mack. And uh, it's uh, you can put it on your phone, subscribe to it, and you will hear a lot of good, good stuff. Amen. So I have so much I want to share about Holy Spirit. He's my best friend. I so love him. I so appreciate him. And you know, like when you have a, your best friend, you want to share him with everybody, right? You want everybody to enjoy him and benefit from his goodness and what he wants to do because we are in a new covenant, amen, where we need a Holy Spirit. It is the dispensation of Holy Spirit. We are now serving God in the newness of of the spirit, according to Romans chapter seven, verse six. And so we need to be so dependent on him to commune with him, to listen to him, to talk to him, to follow him. And also we are now talking about the spirit of intercession, the spirit of supplication that wants to help us to pray better so we can walk in the will of God. That's what we want to do, isn't it? So I started to talk in the last session about how it is important for you and know to know if we want for all things to work together for good for us, we're going to have to pray according to the will of God. We can pray the word of God, but there are so many things in the background, in the spirit, in the uh, unknown, unseen world, things that we don't know, things we don't understand, you know, especially there are more people involved in, 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 in your prayer uh, uh, need, then you need to have the Holy Spirit help you to pray uh, uh, the perfect will of God. And you can do that by praying in another tongue. Amen. And that's why the Spirit of God is called the Spirit of Supplication. Oh, he's so good. He can search the, the heart of God, the will of God, the wisdom of God, the past, the present, and the future, and can pray through this prayer language that will come out of your mouth, from your spirit. He will pray his will. And so it is so important. And you know, um, so many times you need wisdom. And what is wisdom? Wisdom is, you know, you can have knowledge, but that doesn't mean automatically that you will know how to apply this knowledge, right? You can have all the knowledge, but you don't know how to apply what you know to a specific situation. And wisdom, that's what wisdom is. Wisdom is knowing how to apply the knowledge that you have to your situation or the situation of somebody else. And so that's why the Holy Spirit is called the spirit of wisdom, amen, and revelation. He wants to first give you revelation of what the will of God is, amen, but he wants to give you the wisdom on how to apply this wisdom. That's the reason why, you know, I pray in the spirit a lot, especially when I read the scriptures because I want revelation. I just don't want to have head knowledge. I just don't want to know the word theologically. I want to know the word in a, 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 and have revelation. God speaking to me exactly about his will, his word. And amen. And I have the Holy Spirit. You know what he will do? When I have a specific, you know, need or I have a specific problem, I can pray in the spirit and I can receive wisdom. Meaning that at that moment, the Holy Spirit will go in my spirit where I have, hid I have hidden the knowledge of God, the revelation of the word in my spirit, and he will pull it out 
to give me wisdom. It will give me a scripture. It will give me an idea. It will give me a thought, a spontaneous thought. And at that moment, I will be like, whoa, now I know what to do in this situation, you know? Because the Bible says, and I love that, it says in Colossians 2, 3, that in Christ, the, who is the word in you, the living word in you, the logos, the rhema in you. It says, in whom are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. And so when you pray in the spirit, the Holy Spirit will go deep down in that knowledge, in that revelation, in the wisdom, and he will pull it out and give you wisdom. And you know, so many times we think that that only belongs to the ministers, you know, the fivefold ministry. But a business, a businessman can pray for wisdom. A, a teacher can pray for wisdom. I mean, you can be a teacher and you might don't know how to reach out to some of your students, how to minister, you know, life to your students, not just knowledge. You can pray in tongues and ask God for wisdom. You know, I remember... I remember actually, and this is pretty cool, my husband, you know, he's a businessman. And one time, you know, he had a customer. He was trying to help a customer. It had a special project. And he went to the building department where he was supposed to get the permit and the, you know, all the ins and out of, you know, building codes and all of that. And the building department said, no, Mr. Mag, you cannot do that. If, you know, the only way you can do that, you're going to have to do this and this and this. And, you know, it was going to cost his customer an extra ten to $15,000. And something on the inside, you know, because my husband is business, is a ministry, and he's there to help people. He, he doesn't want just people to, you know, it's not about, you know, you know, money. For him, it's about a service, how he can help people to the best of his ability. And something in him was like, no, this is not right. You know, something just didn't feel right in his heart. And so he kept going to the building department. He came up with new ideas. And every time he was a no, Mr. Mac, it cannot be done. No, Mr. Mac, it cannot be done. And all of a sudden, one day he had that thought. You know, and that was from the Holy Spirit, by the way. He had that spontaneous thought. How, you know, I hear my wife preaching and teaching all the time about the benefit of praying in another tongue. What if I pray in another tongue and, and dig deep in the knowledge and the wisdom of God that is in me? And so he did. He went behind his desk and prayed, prayed in the Spirit for like 20 minutes. And you know, it is very amazing. It's awesome because the Bible also say in the Bible, and I believe it's in 1 Corinthians 14, uh, in verse 17, it says, I will pray then that I may interpret. You know, you can pray in the spirit and then ask God for the interpretation or the understanding of what you just prayed in the spirit. You know, and if God wants you to know it, you'll get the interpretation as a spontaneous thought. I, I mean, just flashing through your, your mind. And so uh, my husband did that. And he prayed in the spirit and said, Lord, I thank you that you give me the interpretation. And then he had an appointment. So after 20 minutes, he left, he went to his appointment. And the next day, as he didn't even, you know, he was expecting God to speak to him, but he was not, he was in a moment as he was doing something else. All of a sudden, he just, something came to his heart, an idea. And he thought, oh my goodness, I wonder if that could work. So he went to the building department with this new idea that came from the spirit of God, the spirit of wisdom and revelation, and he presented it. And the building department went, Mm, oh, ah, you know what? We think it can work. And so because right there they gave him the permit and it saved his customers $15,000 because he had spent time praying in the spirit, asking for the interpretation and expecting God to speak to him that moment or later, but he knew God would. And you know, this is so amazing how you can pray 
for the, uh, uh, the wisdom of God uh, and know how to do, you know. And another time, just to give you an idea, remember, as I was, uh, my husband was building us a house and I had some idea for my kitchen and I had bought some kind of a plaque to put right there behind my stove. And so um, for like a, a couple, I think it was like for three years, we lived in different homes. We rented, we even lived in a room in his office, you know, as he was building and everything. And so I had all of our furniture, everything was stored in a big place. And I had that plaque that I had bought somewhere in the midst of all the furniture, the boxes and everything. And the place was big, you know. And so that day, as we are building the house, the builders, you know, the tile people said, hey, Mrs. Mag, we're ready to put your backsplash. Do you have that plaque? And all of a sudden, I'm like, oh, my goodness, it's hidden somewhere in that place. I don't remember I put it. It's been so long. It's been like three years ago. And so I go in that place. There are boxes from, you know, from uh, floor to ceiling, furniture everywhere. And I'm like, Lord, I have no idea what that thing is. You know what I did? I prayed in the spirit right there. And it didn't take me two years, right? I prayed in the spirit and I said, Holy Spirit, you know where I put that thing. Would you please show me, help me, reveal to me, and would you please direct me? And I prayed in the spirit. And all of a sudden, and it was like a, it, I, it almost felt like I had a GPS on the inside. I just walked straight, I turned right, it was like God was guiding me to turn right. And all of a sudden, after five minutes, I pulled a box, a couple of boxes, and right there between boxes was that plaque. And in a matter of five to 10 minutes, I got that, you know, even less than 10 minutes, it was like a five minute thing. I found it, that was the Holy Spirit that led me, helped me, and revealed to me where that thing was. So you see, Holy Spirit wants to help us, give us wisdom, help us to pray. Hallelujah. But you know, um, has it happened to you that sometime Holy Spirit might interrupt you through your day or maybe wake you up in the middle of the night? And it is not, it's different from when Holy Spirit draws you to pray. Because at that moment, it's like you are feeling like a heaviness. It's like a burden, for lack of a better word. It's like you wake up and you feel that heaviness with an urgency in your heart, or you feel like, ooh, you know that you've got to pray. You know, it's like a, a, a divine interruption. You know, sometimes you, you are working and all of a sudden you feel like, oh, that heaviness that comes upon you and you know you've got to pray. Or sometimes you wake up in the middle of the night and you're like, I've got to pray. What's going on? And you feel that heaviness and, and you, you should get out of bed. You know, that is because the Holy Spirit is also called the spirit of intercession. And what is intercession? Intercession is praying on behalf of somebody else. And you know, Holy Spirit who knows all things, you know, I love it, and this is how I picture it, that he is omniscient. So he can be everywhere at the same time. He can be in China, in Russia, in Saudi Arabia, in Quebec, and here in Jacksonville, Florida at the same time, and he can see everything, know every need, and aware of every situation at the same time. And so Holy Spirit, who is so good, you know, God wants to help us and intervene on our behalf. You remember Romans 8, 26 through 27, it says the, uh, the Holy Spirit himself wants to make intercessions for the saints, with groanings which cannot be uttered. There will be time where Holy Spirit can wake you up, can interrupt you, can stop you, and give you that, that burden, that awareness, that heaviness to say, hey, I need you to pray for somebody. And sometimes you will know. You will have a face flashing before you, or a, a name coming spontaneously to your heart, and so you might know who you're praying for, but sometimes you won't. Now, here is my 
my advice. When that happened, do not disregard it. Do not put it to another time. Do not ignore it, but yield to it. Now, why do I say that? And why, how do I know that? You know, when I was brand new in the Lord, I had just got saved. God had spoken to me to pack my bags, to give everything, sell everything, just get two suitcases and move to the United States. I obeyed. I did it. You know, like Abraham who went to a place he didn't know. I didn't know anybody in the U.S., but I just obeyed. And so I didn't really know what and where, so I thought, well, um, I'm just going to go to England on the way to America, and as I go there, God will show me the next step. So I went to England, and I stayed there with my sister who lived there, and you know, we hadn't seen each other for a long time. And so she started talking to me and she's so enthusiastic and she's telling me everything. And all of a sudden, in the middle of her our conversation, mm, I had one of those interruption, one of those, you know, burden of prayer, one of, you know, knowing. And I knew, really, I knew I was supposed to stop in the middle of this and pray. But I didn't, I didn't know what I know now. You know, that's why I'm teaching it. I just told myself, oh, I don't want to stop her. I don't want to offend her, interrupt her. I will pray later. And you know, later never came. Why? Because later I was, you know, I was so tired. I went to bed, fell on my bed, so tired, and I slept. And I fell asleep. And you know, very early that morning, we got a phone call that that night, my dad had died. Yeah, you know what I felt. You know how that moment what came to my heart. And I thought, oh, God, forgive me. And I said, Lord, what would have happened if I had prayed my dad would still be alive? Because you see, it was Holy Spirit that knew what was happening, that was trying to draw me to pray for my father. He was wanting to do something right there. And I didn't, I ignored it. I didn't know, you know, so I say, Lord, at first I, I ask forgiveness because I realized I had made a huge mistake. But thank God I did not get into condemnation and you know I just knew that God's grace and God's mercy was so much bigger but I say Lord please teach me never to make the same please teach me how to pray please show me you know and help me and teach me and so I have to say that through the years God has taught me a lot of things things that I'm sharing with you and you know here is a bit of good news. And just to show you the power of the Holy Spirit, who is that spirit of supplication and spirit of intercession. You know that a few years ago, um, I got a phone call from France, from my sisters, that my brother was diagnosed with brain cancer. And so immediately, my husband and I, we booked a flight. We went to the south of France. And here we are in the hospital where he was. And my heart, I mean, I have seen a lot of healings. I've seen, I've laid hands on a lot of people and seen God do mighty things. So my heart, my desire is like, I'm going to go there, lay hands on my brother. I'm going to pray. God's going to heal him. But you know, you cannot force people to receive prayer. You cannot force people in, you know, to, to be healed you know, by the laying of hands. So I'm, I'm talking to my brother, and my brother uh, is not a Christian, was not a Christian. My brother didn't know anything. You know, we were kind of raised more or less with a, you know, a Catholic, you know, mindset. And, you know, that sometimes the sickness is God's way of, you know, helping us to go through the suffering to whatever holy reason, you know. So I'm sharing with my brother how God wants to heal him, how I can pray for him, and he's not interested. Um, and so I'm like, at that point, I'm so frustrated. But I'm thinking, okay, mission number two. I'm going to pray so he can receive Jesus because I know if he doesn't receive healing, he will die. 
Amen. I, I, I kind of had that, you know, that urgency and that knowing. So I'm ministering the gospel to him, praying. I mean, we stayed there like a whole month, you know, praying for him and ministering to him. He doesn't really want to hear. And as I'm ministering the gospel, he keeps on saying, you know, God and I were like this. You know, I'm going, I'm doing well. Go back home. Don't worry for me. We all good. God and me, we just like this, you know. And I knew in my spirit, you know, we don't know the heart of man. I agree. But I knew enough. You know, the Bible said you shall know them by their fruit. And I knew enough by the fruit in their lives that they didn't really have an encounter with the Lord. You know, I knew enough of that. And so I'm sharing the gospel. Don't want to hear it. Not interested. So finally, I have to go back home. So we have to fly back. And... um, I am so frustrated, you know, but I pray and I'm like, Lord, I know I need to reach him. So I'm praying. Of course, I'm praying, but I'm like, Lord, what can I do? And I pray, Lord, and I know my sisters, same boat, you know, more or less, maybe a little, you know, more sensitive to God, but, but pretty much in the same mindset. And I'm like, Lord, what do I do? So we got that idea. Why don't you call him on the phone? He's got a cell phone right there by his bed. Call him. So also, you know, for like the next couple of months, I'm reaching him, trying to call on the phone, call him, call him. He would not pick up his phone. He will not. And so I'm frustrated. And, but, you know, on my birthday, I remember it was September 12th, which is my birthday. And I know that God is so sweet. He's a good father. So that day I remember praying and say, Father God, Thank you, Lord, that I know you always love me, take care of me, and you want to bless me. So today's my birthday, Father. Could I ask you a huge favor? The best gift you could give me, could you allow me to talk to my brother and lead him to Jesus? That was my prayer for my birthday. And you know, all day long, I try to call him. My brother would not pick up the phone. Oh, at the end of the evening, I was disappointed and I didn't understand I'm like Lord you always answer my prayers what's happening now and so I went to bed a little discouraged but you know what happened at one in the morning all of a sudden out of nowhere one in the morning we heard a big bam like a door that slammed I mean I don't I wasn't the only one to hear because my husband laying right there we both sat in bed, looked at each other and thought, oh my goodness, somebody broke in the house. So, I mean, immediately, my husband, I mean, instantly, he just reached us in his, you know, in his drawer, take his gun and start going around the house, you know, just to, to, to see if something, somebody broke in, you know. And then at that moment, I knew in my heart, it was the Holy Spirit who woke us up to pray in the Spirit. But now... I knew that I was supposed to pray for my brother, but I had no idea what was happening thousands of miles away. So I prayed in the spirit. I got out of bed and prayed in the spirit, prayed in the spirit. And all of a sudden, out of nowhere, I just spoke out. I mean, it just came out of my mouth. And I said, in the name of Jesus, death, get out of the room right now. In the name of Jesus, death, lose my brother's body right now. And I just prayed in the spirit and I went on like that for another few minutes. And all of a sudden I had a spontaneous thought, call him on the phone right now. And I I have to admit that for a few seconds, I kind of thought, well, I just tried to call him for the last two months and he never picked up. I tried all day long, he didn't pick up. But then I, 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 I knew better. So I went, picked up the phone, called him, And he picked up the phone immediately. It almost kind of shocked me. Oh, me of great faith, right? You know, that shows you that wasn't my faith, right? Oh, it was the Lord. And so he picked up the phone and I said, Roberto, listen to me. I said, God just woke me up in the middle of the night to pray for you. I don't know what's happening, but I said, you need Jesus. And here were his words. He says, God wants my attention, doesn't he? And I said, yes, he does. He said, you know what? God is right here in my room, right there. You know, and I went, yes, 
He said, yeah. And so right there, I didn't wait any. I said, you need Jesus. I said, would you want to pray with me right now? And he says, yes, I will. And so I had him pray the sinner's prayers right there. And he prayed. And then he says, sis, I'm sorry. He said, I will have to go. I'm feeling so tired right now. So I hung up the phone. Oh, man, if I knew how to do it, I would have done backflip. I was so excited. But, you know, a few hours later on French time, I got a phone call from my sister. And she said, you know what happened last night? You called our brother, right? I said, yes. She said, you know what had happened? I said, no, I don't. She said, our brother had died. He died, and he said, you know what he told us? That he saw his spirit left his body, and all he could see, he was like sucked through space, going up, 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 up through his, uh, 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 over his room, and he saw his body laying on that hospital bed, and he even said that he saw himself go to the, the bathroom on himself, which, by the way, uh, I was told by medical people that's a sign that your organs are releasing and because you're dead. That's the first sign of death is your organs just let go and you pee on yourself. Interesting fact, isn't it? And he saw his body going up, 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 up. His, his spirit, excuse me, go up, up, up through the ceiling, up through the roof, up through the atmosphere. You know, have you ever seen those movie life after death kind of thing when you see the people going up and they like, and they can see what's happening right there in that room, and but they cannot do anything. They might speak, nobody hears them. And that's what happened to my brother. He went up, 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 up through, sucked in, to the darkness, and he couldn't do anything about it. And all of a sudden, shoo, he went back in his body. Oh, just enough. And a few minutes later, you know what happened. The telephone rang and right there. Do you see what God did? The spirit of God, the spirit of supplication, the spirit of intercession, glory to God, searched through the earth, and he knew, he answered my prayer. He knew that my brother would die, and he woke me up in the middle of the night to call me to pray, and thank God I did not ignore it, but I cooperated with him, and right there I was able to work with him to raise my brother from the dead so that he could receive Jesus. Oh, this is so awesome. You know, I believe that as we work with Holy Spirit, who is searching through all the, the earth, and he sees people that are in danger, people that are about to die, people that are you know, maybe doing an overdose. There are so many. He wants to help. So I'm running out of time right now, but I will come back in the next episode. Oh, and I have, I will share so much more and, and to help you on how to cooperate with Holy Spirit in prayer. God bless you.